Well, welcome to the Go Your Way podcast, and I'm joined once again by Phoebe Go. And Phoebe, we've got a really, really special guest, Matthias Giro, super Frenchy, as he's known, world record holder, base jumper, championship <laughs> skier. Uh, I, Matthias, or, or I'll just say super Frenchy, I don't know how <laughs> else to, to frame. How do you describe yourself to people? Base jumper and championship skier sounds like a mouthful by itself. It's yeah. I've just summarized it by being a um, a mountain athlete. So and that's just you know I end up being a, a multi sports mountain athlete specialized in alpinism, skiing and base jumping. So but it's yeah it's a lot. <laughs> well, it's great for you to join us. And obviously, this is a little bit of a teaser for we have an upcoming. Uh, Ready, set, event coming up in on September 24th at 9 a.m. Pacific. And you're going to be joining us with a keynote talking about transformation, your own transformation. You've got this incredible story. And we don't have time on this podcast to peel all the way back. But it's an amazing story that's applicable whether you're an athlete, whether you're a change leader in an organization, or re- if, even if you're just a, a system admin in an organization and your team is going through or your project is going through a transformation that they all have challenges. How do you navigate those? Keep clarity and focus on the goal and the outcome. Well, I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm hopefully uh, be able to, to transpose some of that uh, methodology and, and have it be applicable to uh, to a multitude of environments. I think, you know, in the end, it's all human human uh, endeavors and, and, and behaviors in the end, right? Whether you are part of a corporate structure, are you jumping off a cliff? What is your methodology? What do you pay attention what are the de- to? What, what are the details that you need to focus on in order to survive? So that, that's all we're doing in the end. We're trying to survive and, and do it gracefully. <laughs> so here's a question for you. If you were um, to say to somebody, what is the one thing that they need to think about survival, what would you say you know, they should keep in mind? Uh, well, you know, my motto is success is in the vision, survival is in the details. So don't forget where you want to go, but don't focus just on the end goal. Focus on each stages that is going to take you there. When you're climbing a mountain, you don't think just about the summit the whole time. You think about making it to the refuge first. Then you're thinking about climbing through the rocks at night, and then eventually you'll be at the summit and you'll, uh, and you'll cheer, you know, but it's, it's about embracing the whole process. You know, one thing I, I thought was particularly interesting as we were preparing for this conversation with you, again, September 24th at 9 a.m. Pacific, as we were preparing for this, one of the comments you made that I thought was really interesting, you know, we spent so much of our time trying to eliminate fear and, uh, and, and block that out as we're accomplishing whatever the goals that we have in our lives and at work. And one of the things that jumped out to me is you talk about embracing fear, eliminating the risks but appreciating and understanding the fear that comes with it is using that as a motivator. Yeah, it is. I mean, my, my relationship with fear has definitely evolved over the years. Uh, I would say back in the day when I started skiing professionally, I just ignored it. And that was my way to summon the courage to jump off a cliff in front of a camera. Eventually, I tried to manage it through kind of controlling my anxiety. But you, you can't really manage fear. Fear is always going to be there, right? Eventually, I just realized that while fear is there, It forces you to pay attention. It's the only emotion that'll trigger your full potential and so forth. So now I fully embrace fear. Fear, and I always say that fear is your best friend. Phoebe, do you get scared at all? (laughs) Do you embrace your fear? I, I, well, I, I try to. I think I was listening, thinking, you know, one of the hard things is even knowing that you're scared sometimes when you're in that moment. You're, there's so many things going through your head. It's, uh, you know, how do you find like this self awareness that you, you actually go, oh, actually, yeah, I am scared. Uh, or, or I do need to think about, you know, I, I realize that there's, there's other stuff going on in, inside that uh, if I can concentrate on that, you know, I can get to the summit, uh, I can get to the next step. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it depends on, there, there are situational fears, right? There's the fear when you, you're climbing or ascending something and you're in the middle of like a rockfall area, you're like, okay, don't panic, you know, this is going to happen, you stay sharp. <laughs> but then there's the fear when, you know, when, when you jump off a cliff, the fear is generally gone when you're in the air, uh, but the fear is very crushing and, and imposing, I would say, almost prior to that. As you're getting ready, when I'm, when I'm gearing up on top of a cliff and I'm about to go, this is the worst time. This is sometimes <laughs> I want to throw up. My knees are shaking. 
But 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 as I work my way through the process and my checklist, things kind of fall into place, and then I go through a, a very thorough and established routine that eventually uh, weeds out as much of the uncertainty as possible. And so then the only thing that I'm left with is almost that fear. And that's um, it's it's a very useful tool to get in the right physical and mental state uh, to to be able to accomplish it. You know, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, when I was doing my research on you, you have a great video on YouTube of your TEDx speech of, at Berkeley. And, you know, I imagine being a base jumper, a skier, an athlete, and then transitioning to being like this keynote speaker here. What kind of fear was there with that? I mean, that's, a, that's an entirely different practice, <laughs> Man, I was I was terrified backstage and and also when I got the the schedule for TEDx right the 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 I, I get the outline for all the speakers and there's session one session two session three and generally when you have a speaking event they kind of base all their expectation on the first speaker and the closing speaker right and so I open up and I'm like okay session one I'm not in there all right let's go session two and then I go to session two and I don't see my name and I'm like oh my god no I'm in session three and then I look through session three and I don't see my name and then I'm like oh okay I'm second to last <laughs> and then I look at the last speaker but no it's 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 a performer it's a it's a young lady who's a pianist and is doing you know, performing a piece on, on stage. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm the last speaker. So pressure is on. So backstage, I was listening to heavy metal and doing push-ups to get all amped. <laughs> and, last, <laughs> and last thing I know, I hear, Matthias, you're up in 90 seconds. So I got on stage right away and it took me almost a, min a minute to actually catch my breath. And people might have thought it would have been stressed, but that's okay. Eventually I found my rhythm and got it done. But it gave me a lot of appreciation for rock stars, for example, that do that all the time, you know, in stage in front of 20, not 2,000, but 20,000 people and uh, but you know the great thing about this experience is that um, I never thought a room so big could feel so intimate and and I could feel the connection with the audience you know I got to show some videos and share some very personal moments too and and hearing their reaction even though they can't interact or ask questions or whatever the room also felt felt super small and and I I got off stage and I was like, whoa, I want to do more of this. This is awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. And people can hear more about your story. And it, it again, it's so rich, so broad. You, you know, you you you've gone through personal physical challenges and tragedies, uh, personal tragedies uh, in your life, and you really kind of map out where you where you can be at some of your lowest points. And get to the literally the highest points uh, with base jumping and with championship skiing. So, looking so forward to your keynote presentation again. That's September twenty fourth, nine a.m. Pacific. Uh, Phoebe, I know you'll be listening in on that. And how can folks promote our podcast? We've got likes down below, but how can they give us five star reviews? Well, the first thing they should do is. Uh, like our video and subscribe by hitting the subscribe button, but also show up and, and come and, and chat to us when we are doing the community roundtable because it's going to be so much fun and I'm looking forward to hearing more from you, Matthias. <laughs> having me, I'm excited to uh, connect with your team and be able to selfishly share my story, but hopefully uh, you guys will be able to draw some, uh, some, some information, knowledge, and, and hopefully empowerment out of it. So, <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Matthias. Thank you, Phoebe, and thank you to our audience.